fabulous and welcome to this pre-match show it's the manchester's blue show as always with tom how are we doing buddy yeah doing well mate doing well how about Good yourself tom, it's the dream team yeah yeah, not not very often. It's just the two of us, but no, yeah, mate, it's like not. Say. It's good to see it, and I'm loving that t-shirt. Yeah, this was a uh, this was uh, Mum's design actually when they did the old thing at the Etihad last year, where you could design your own city shirt with some of the templates. So she's got the Oasis badge here, bit of David Silver on one side. You uh, that. Little Agu- yeah, I was like, I was at uni at the time, so I was like, go on. If I book it in, you can design it me for a Christmas present. So uh, she, she says she stressed a little bit over it, trying to decide. There was a lot of patches laid out on the table, and she was like, "You can pick however many." But she, uh, she did a, she did an alright job. So uh, yeah, happy days. Oh, bless it. Just to people and just from the from the podcast point of view, he's got a, a blue and white uh, city track type training top. He's got a bespoke city badge with Oasis instead of City. He's got something on the arm, something so David Silver on the sleeve. It looks pretty cool, that mate. I like <laughs> that. But we're not talking about fashion tonight, are we? We're talking about the game tomorrow. It's, a, it's an early kickoff on, on BT Sport yeah. 3 tomorrow, 7.55 kickoff. Um, I'm assuming Greece are one or two hours behind. My, my travelling over to Greece has been a long time since in the past. So I'm gonna have to, I can't remember what the time difference is over there. Well, that's, that's an early start, that pal, isn't it, for us Blues? Yeah, I think, uh, thankfully, quite a lot of us working from home, aren't we? So we don't have to... Uh rush home from work to get in and turn it on on the telly. But yeah, five to six. I was trying to think of, we had, um, we've had a couple of them. We had, we had a Greek side in, was it a Greek side in the Europa League? Was it AEK Athens a few years back, which was an early kick? We've got Aria as well, haven't we, I think? Aria? Aria? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So maybe that's what I'm thinking of. But we've had, we've had a couple. We don't, we don't get many of them. They're not, uh, they're not the most enjoyable fixtures. I don't know what it is. I can't really get myself geared up for a, for a six <laughs> o'clock kickoff. But, but hopefully we can, uh, <sighs> we can, Get, get us geared up with a big performance, hopefully. If my memory serves me right, I think that was nil-nil away. And it was Joy Mancini's game. It was an horrible, horrible game to watch. So that, I, I might be completely wrong in thinking that. It could have been Athens for all I know. But I'm sure Aria just jumps to mind for a uh, a Greek team we've played. Anyway, that could be you know, that, that could be a quiz competition for us for the future, couldn't it? Yeah. Well, we're, for sure. uh, we're, we're very much at the uh, City are yet to progress. Uh, City are yet to get past the quarterfinals under Guardiola with previous boss Pellegrini leading the club to the semi-final in 2016. Just going to run through a few quotes from him from the press conference today. Um, when somebody put the question to him, is it, is it this year he wants to win it? Obviously, every year you want to win it. Silly question. Uh, but he said, we will try our best. We have an important chance to almost qualify. That's so good to be in the last 16 teams in Europe. I expect a reaction after last season when we finished against Leon in Portugal. We know what to do. I would kind of say it's a reaction from you, please, Pep, after Leon. Um, <laughs> the season is still young and I'm fully optimistic we are going to have a good season. Um, so, you know, he, he's he's sounding, he's got all the right sound bites there, and so he's, he's sounding positive. And we've got to go and smash them, haven't we? After, let's forget Champions League our season. Let's 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 concentrate on the, the 2 0 frustrations that, that the Spurs came in. We, we, need a, we need a massive. Boost to confidence after that, don't we, Pat? We need we need we need a big result with this game. Yeah, for sure. I think Spurs of the weekend was a strange one because I think as much as we didn't play well, Spurs also played really well, which was a, another eye opener in the fact that this is a big team who not many people have really said can win the league. Uh, but I think after the I think the weekend after the game of the weekend was the first time I've said that I genuinely believe Spurs could win the league this year. Uh, I, I've said week on week that I, I still think it's too early to say, and it is still really early in the season. But that performance was was a real eye opener, both in terms of the fact that we're well below par at the minute, but the fact that these other teams, Chelsea, keep winning, Liverpool keep winning, yeah. Spurs keep winning, and we keep dropping points. And like you say, we need to sort of build some momentum and find some momentum from somewhere. And I think we've said it a couple of times with the Champions League, but we really do need to start that on Wednesday. And then we've got, or tomorrow I should say, and then we've got, I think, Burnley at home. And then I think that our next run of fixtures now that we've got out of this this sort of tricky patch with Liverpool and Spurs and the likes, I think on paper, we've got a more favourable run of fixtures coming up up we until are. sort of Christmas time. Yeah, we so are. we need to start finding a way to uh, <laughs> to turn these sort of, these fixtures into points because we could soon, last year we were out of the title running essentially by Christmas and we could soon find ourselves in the same position this year, especially with, with more teams performing to a high level this year. So if we don't start start picking up points soon, we, we will soon find ourselves looking at 
right, we need to sort of solidify that top four place. And we don't want to be aiming for that as City. People talk about a rebuild. We shouldn't be looking at a rebuild. We've got a good enough squad to challenge for the title. Correct. We do still need one or two areas. We need a, a, a fit striker to stay fit and things like that. But I don't think we're in a position where we can say, look, this season we've not got the squad to win the title because I really do believe we do, but we're just not showing that we're looking anywhere near winning the title at the moment, unfortunately. I think on previous podcasts with the lads, I've had I had said left back, defensive midfield and a striker as the only areas. There's no rebuild needed at all, in in my opinion. I, I, I really I really don't think that's that's necessary whatsoever. But we're looking looking at the Champions League. Uh, we've won our opening three games in this year's competition with a goal difference, a goal aggregate, should I say, of nine goals to one, and. We, 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 you know, they're a team we can beat. We, we really can. I mean, we, we win. We, we secure top spot, don't we? Um, virtual support top spot. It's not official, is it? If we, if we win, we, can, we I, no, think, I think Porto would need to score a ridiculous amount of goals to, to yeah. come top. So, I think, I think we just need to focus that three points, get that win under our belt, and then, and then we go from there, don't we? Um, it's the first time in a long time we've got, we've got a semi-fit squad, haven't we? It's only Ake that's yeah. not fit. Yeah. Um, obviously, Sergio's back on the bench as well, but I don't want to see him play. If I'm honest with you, I know that sounds terrible, um, but Sergio's gonna—we're gonna need him at the latter part of the season. We're gonna need him after Christmas. Let, let's not worry about Greece on a Wednesday night when we're, we're nearly through yeah. in this Champions. I don't want to see. But saying that, we all know Pep will probably start him and play him for ninety minutes. <laughs> we, uh, what, what are you expecting from a, from a team for tomorrow? Um, I'm not expecting anything. Massive. I think obviously we've seen Kyle Walker and De Bruyne have been left in Manchester, haven't they? So that's nice to see them two getting the rest that they really do need. I think yes. Walker proved it more so. I mean, De Bruyne weren't great at the weekend, but Walker was for me one of our worst players at the weekend. I thought positionally, which is usually Walker's main strength. I thought he was he was caught out of position a few times. I mean, he was highlighted for the second goal, but there was a couple of times in that first half that that a lot of the play seemed to be directed down their left side, um, which is. Funny to think they'd rather play into Walker on his strong side than Cancelo on his weak side, but I do think he needs a rest. I think the fact, even if he, even if he um, travelled and didn't play tomorrow, just the fact he's not travelling and he's staying in Manchester and just has a few days sort of off from high intensity training and get and playing will will do him well. Um, and obviously De Bruyne has not been sort of at the high levels we expect of him over the last couple of weeks. So again, a rest for him is perfect, but. In terms of the team, I think we'll see we'll see Stone start. I think we'll see um I think we'll see, yeah, obviously Cancelo play. Who who plays at left back? I'm I'm not so sure with Ake not fit. Um and obviously Walker not travelling. I'm not I don't is Mendy back fit? Is Mendy yeah, Mendy's, Oh yeah, it's Mendy's Mendy's they're all fit. So I presume I presume we'll see Mendy play left back. Uh, I'm I'm not sure which of the kids have travelled. I don't know if any of the kids have gone over there. I've not seen the full list of who's travelled, but I wouldn't be surprised to see um the likes of Nemetra, if he's travelled, get a few minutes like he did in, in the last Champions League game. Uh, I think Bernardo will play. Uh, Gundogan will always play because it's Champions League. Yeah. It'll be a team made up of... It'll be a team strong enough to go out there and get the job done. Um, hopefully, if Jesus plays, he can get himself a couple of goals and sort of continue that sort of form he was building before the international break because he looked not uh, a, bit, uh, a bit off at the weekend, as did the rest of the side. So... I don't want to see massive changes in terms of... I don't want to see a completely different side to the team that will play against Burnley at the weekend. But at the same time, I think we do need to sort of realise that the Champions League group stage is done now. It'd take a disaster for us to not qualify. Um, so we do need to sort of manage players' time well. Um, and sort of those players who are, who are a little bit off form at the moment, um, give them some minutes and then sort of rest those that need a rest, and then hopefully we can we can kick on in the league, because if you look at us in the Champions League compared to the league this year, the Champions League hasn't been an issue at all. I don't think I've watched us in the Champions League and thought, Plum and not quite with it, because we've, we've looked, especially Marseille away, we were unreal that night. I think that's the best I've seen us play this season by a country mile, so we just need to sort of find a way of bring that Champions League mentality and that Champions League form over to the Premier League and start finding ways to break down stubborn defences, because we've just not We've not done that so far this season. Yeah, you spot on. I've got, I've got a list of the names that travelled today. This is in no particular order, as you can probably tell. Um, <laughs> Diaz, Stones, Sterling, Gundogan, Jesus, Aguero, Zinchenko, Stefan, Lepore, Rodri, Bernardo Silva, Torres, Mendy, Fernandinho. I bet we'd see Fernandinho tomorrow. Um, Raheem, uh, sorry, Mares, Cancelo, Edison, 
Scott Carson, great to see Scott play. <laughs> uh, Phil Foden, Garcia, Nemecha, you called it. Uh, Tommy Doyle and Carl, um, Cole Palmer. So, you know, there's a, there's a good a good mix of youth there. I'd, be, I'd quite like to see a bit of youth come out of that game tomorrow. Just just looking at the, the, the standings of where we are for Group C, uh, Marseille are on zero points, um, Olympic are on three, Porto are on six, City are on nine. So we only need one point to get through to the next stage. Um, so, yeah, stick the kids in. Don't risk any 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 plays that we, we don't want to risk. It's, that's not that's a massive obvious one for us, isn't it? Really? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think it's, it's a it's a it is it's a big game in the fact that we do need the result to sort of if we can guarantee ourselves if we if the results go our way tomorrow and we guarantee the top spot, then for game week five and six we literally can play whoever we want. It really doesn't matter. I think Guardiola will want to get it wrapped up as soon as he can. And with that in mind, I do think we'll see a sort of more senior squad with a couple of the youth players coming on off the bench, whereas then going into game week five and six, I think we'll see Nemecha start. I think we'll see um, Delap brought back into the senior fold and things like that just to give them some more minutes. Yeah, probably. But yeah, ho- hopefully we can just get the job done early as well. I don't want none of this 0-0 at half-time, 1-0 down at half-time, needing to sort of play for 90 minutes. If we can, If we can take a decent lead into the break, and to take the foot off the gas in the second half, that'd be perfect because um, yeah. we've obviously got um, we've got Burnley at the weekend, which again on paper is an easier game, but they're a really stubborn side defensively as well, and we've we've, we've struggled to break down those stubborn defences this year, so that's not going to be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination. So the sooner we can get the job done tomorrow and sort of bring those those key players off, give them a bit of a rest ahead of the weekend, that'd be perfect for me. It's putting, it's putting the ball in the net, which is the critical thing, and that's why it's so good to have uh, Sergio back, but. Guardiola said during his press conference today that he, that he essentially is not going to rush him. Um, I'll, I'll use a quote here. Um, we want him. We want him to come back training again. He can recover. Good feeling. Uh, this is the most important thing. We take it one step at a time. We have many games this season to play, and we need him. We want him in the best condition. So he's not going to rush him. He's not going to do anything stupid. I would be extremely surprised if we saw him tomorrow. But that said, we still need goals. But you'd like to think that um, Olympic are the type of team that we can we can score against. We have we have got goal scorers in the team. It's, yeah, I'd, I'd stick Torres up front. I, I really want to see more of him up front. And I think tomorrow tomorrow and, and the Burnley game are really good opportunities to see what he can do because they're completely different contrasts of defenders, aren't they? Yeah, I think we've seen it with Torres. Um, he was he was. Pretty quiet against Liverpool, and I think he again he was he was quite quiet against Spurs. He had the ball at his feet more against Spurs, but never really made anything of it. But I think when we've seen him play up front in that short period of time that um, that Jesus and Aguero were out against Sheffield United, I know he didn't score, but he was he was there and thereabouts on a couple of occasions. A couple of great saves stopped him there, and then obviously he got the goal when we played against Marseille and things like that. And we've seen him for Spain. He really does have an eye for goal, and he knows he knows where the back of the net is for sure. Um, and I think he's sort of got that his movement is sort of second to none for me. I think Jesus is really good at sort of his uh, his work rate is incredible and sort of he's always pressing and things like that. But in terms of movement off the ball and finding spaces, I think Ferran Torres is, is one of the best we've got in the squad for that. And I think that is what we're sort of missing at the minute and the fact that we're not, we're not there when we need to be in terms of chances created. So I think playing him up front, for me, is what I'd I'd have him starting up front at the moment um, as well, like you're saying. But I just I can't see how Pep's gonna um, gonna play Torres up front over uh, over Jesus or Aguero if they fit. It's just it's a real well, strange situation, know, isn't it? You say that hasn't Torres scored in the last three Champions League games? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. yeah, he has. Actually, he has. You know what? He's got he's got that form, hasn't he? That that's just that's yeah. just that's just ticked in there. Where actually, do you know what? He might, he might just stick him in there. But I think we've got such a good, diverse attacking option, a good range of attacking options. We could play any three of the, the forward players and each of them could take a striking role at some point or other, can't we? Yeah. And, and do that interchange coming through. What We've seen that in the Champions League a lot as well, haven't we? We saw it at sort of Madrid away last year when we played that Bernardo, De Bruyne, Jesus, all rotating up front and things like that. And it seems to work for us in the Champions League when we do it, so... I say I wouldn't be surprised if he did it. I just I can I in the Champions League more so than the league. I just think I couldn't I could I could easily see Ferran scoring a hat trick up front tomorrow and then getting stuck back out on the wing at the weekend because I just I can't see see Pep sort of um, making that making that change in the league. But 
I think he's, like I say, he's shown enough when he's had the minutes up front to, to suggest that he can play up front. And he's, he's still only really young. And if Pep wants to mould him into a striker, there's no better manager to do that, sort of to, to take a player and, and sort of adapt the game. So I'd like to see him play more minutes up front. Um, I just, whether or not we will, I'm not so sure. But I think, yeah, for sure, in the Champions League, he could be sort of that player that we need to play up front because of the sort of different um, different angle he gives us as sort of a, an attacking outlet, for sure. Uh, Chris is just joining us. How are we doing, pal? You all right? Yeah, not too bad. I'm only on quick because I'm just about to set off for work. Very good, very good time, you mate. We were just about to end it there. But what have your thoughts on the game tomorrow, pal? How do you think we're going to get on? I'm hoping we're going to go out and... Uh do a professional job. I want us to go out there and, and win. But I also want us to u- use this opportunity to use some of the younger lads who are taking with us, to be honest. You know, I don't want us to go out and risk what you call first-team players um, against Olympiacos because effectively we're already pretty much through with the Champions League anyway. Uh, we've still got, is it two games left any after this? Yeah. I think we'd only need like a point or so. So yeah, we need we need we need, um, we need one point, and we've got we've got a good number of youth players coming alongside for the journey. So we're we're hoping that Aguero gets a nice rest. Obviously, Walker and um, Sergio, uh, sorry, Walker and uh, De Bruyne are at home. So we're expecting to see, as Tom said, a nice mix of the youth and a, and, a, and a bit of strength there to take us through. See, I was hoping Aguero was going to start to be honest, because I think he needs a goal. I've not been impressed with him this season. I think he needs a bit of confidence. He needs a. You'd you'd, you'd play him, would you? You'd, you'd I would. Risk. My, my starting eleven would be Stefan in goal, back four of Cancelo, Diaz, Laporte, and Zinchenko. Yeah. I think Cancelo needs to be on his usual side. Laporte and Diaz, I felt were at fault for both goals against Tottenham, and I just want to see Zinchenko back in the squad. Midfield, I'd have um, Tommy Doyle and Gundogan, with Foden. Bernardo Silva and Ferran Torres ahead of him, and Aguero up top. Well, it's definitely an attacking option. Do you think he'd, do you think he'd play Zinchenko at right back then? No, I'd have him at left back. I'd put, I'd put Cancelo right back. Okay. That second goal they scored against, uh, that Tottenham scored, Cancelo was tracking back. There was three on two, and we had Diaz Laporte with, I think it was Harry Kane in between them, and Cancelo was just sort of lost. He, he drifted in, he, he lost his man. He, hadn't, he didn't seem to know where he was going. So I think he needs to be put at right back where he's favoured. And uh and like I said, I'd give Zinchenko a run. You know, I think he was good at left back when we you know, when we've used him there. Let him uh let him show what he can do. It's true actually, because he had he had such a good season for us and he's 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 definitely been under selected by Pep in the, yeah. in the recent history. And it'd be good to see him back and, and see what he can do for us. Because every time he plays Internationally, he he does he has an absolute world. He has a really good game. So you know what what's what's he got to do to to get get that opportunity from him? Because we we were thinking that it could be a chance for Mendy to to come back into the position. But actually, you know what, Zinchenko, he's done nothing wrong if he's training hard. And why not play him? Yeah. See, I always thought the same with Angelino as well. I mean, no matter where he seemed to play away from City, he was having a great game. And then when he got to City, he, he couldn't get a look in. And yet they were always picking someone like Mendy, who was prone to mistakes and not fully fit and getting injured. And even I know Zinchenko had his, his issues last season with the little niggly injuries. They weren't as career threatening, I don't think, as as Mendy's, but he wasn't free of injury last season either. So I I don't think he'll play that sort of squad, to be honest. I don't think he will. I think he'll probably have Rodri and Gundogan in the middle. And he'll probably play Mendy and Cancelo, but I can hope. <laughs> what are you thinking for the obviously I'm not doing a score prediction saying that. Not not predicting against the Spurs game didn't go down for me very well, so it might be time to start doing it again. So, Tom, what are you thinking for a score prediction, pal? I think, um, yeah, it, sh- it should be relatively routine. I think our Champions League form suggests it will be as well. I think it'll be a 2-0 sort of comfortable City win, hopefully. You, you say that, you, oh, you don't fill me with confidence with the way you said that. So. <laughs> what do you reckon, Chris? I'm hoping to be honest I'm really hoping that we just keep a clean sheet because I think our defence is looking a bit a bit shaky they need a confidence boost Olympiacos are not exactly the first team you'd think of in the Champions League as being threatening um, so I really want a clean sheet I know we're away but there's not going to be any fans we, we need to keep a clean sheet 
I'm hope I'd be happy with a one nil because I can't, especially this season. Our goals we've not been finding it. again. It'd be great if our, our strikers can find their feet again and and win two or three nil. But if I'm if I'm a betting man, I'd be putting a one nil win city. One nil city, right? Well, I'm leaving that one with the barge pole, but it's on. It's an early <laughs> kick off tomorrow. I don't know if you're watching it, Chris. You'll probably be working, will you? Uh, no, I only I only start work at nine, so I'll be able to. Uh, I'll, I'll be listening to it. Yeah, five fifty-five kickoff. BT Sport three. Lads, thanks very much for joining us. Have a lovely evening at work, Chris and, and Tom. Carry on with your paperwork, mate. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, guys. Stay safe. Cheers, yeah. See you later. See you.